Hey everyone, Mike here. When Starlink first launched their Better Than Nothing beta way back in 2020, their pricing was super simple. 500 US for the hardware, 99 US per month for service, unlimited usage. Since then, things have gotten significantly more complicated. All the details, coming up. I've been away from YouTube for a while, but the big news now is the new Starlink fair use policy. Up to now, there were no data caps on Starlink. This was huge for all those users coming from satellite and mobile ISPs. A lot of these had very strict data caps. Once you went over your limit, you were severely throttled, so that for most use cases, it was basically unusable. Starlink has been growing rapidly around the world, and it's clear they are having some growing pains in terms of bandwidth, uh, so it's really not surprising that they've introduced a fair use policy. But because of the bad experiences with other ISPs, a lot of people were really upset when Starlink sent out their updated policy emails earlier this month. On the good news side, there are a couple considerations that make the Starlink fair use policy not as bad as it could have been. First, when they count your data usage, they only count data from peak hours. Now, they consider peak hours to be any time from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m., which maybe should be called waking hours. I mean, I get it, Starlink customers have a pretty broad range of usage. Some people working from home, nine to five. Others are mainly using Starlink in the evening to stream movies and TV. We all want those experiences to be fast. The main thing is that they give you a window of time, in this case overnight from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m., where your usage does not count against your limit. There are lots of times when you need to do big downloads. For most people, it's not that frequent. It's like installing operating system updates or uploading a YouTube video, downloading the latest Linux ISO, or maybe downloading some torrents, that kind of thing. Now, I know we're in an on-demand right now world, but as long as you can move those downloads to overnight, then that'll kind of take care of a lot of the usage and make it much easier to stay under that limit. The second nice thing about the policy is the limit. One terabyte per month, and this is measured per calendar month. The one terabyte is fairly generous, or at least not nearly as restrictive as most other ISPs with this kind of policy. Now, this can change in the future, but I think as a starting point is pretty good. And finally, the biggest silver lining of the new fair use policy is that if you do reach your limit, that one terabyte, before the end of the month, you don't get artificially throttled. You just get bumped down to what Starlink calls the basic access mode, which means you're not getting throttled, just deprioritized. So it could still be really slow, but it depends on what others in your area are doing. Everybody on RV plans and mobile plans have always been on basic access, so it shouldn't be too bad. And of course, the whole point of the fair use policy is to move that bulk usage into the overnight time periods, which should make basic access during the day a bit less basic. In the email SpaceX send out, they tell you if your current usage patterns would hit the limit. I'll show you what that usage email looks like in just a sec, but let me know in the comments if you got the email and if you're already hitting the limit, and let me know what you think of the new fair use policy in general. Okay, here's a, an example of what the usage page looks like. You can see it showing your peak usage in blue and your off-peak usage in gray. So it's nice that you get a real-time view at least. But there's one aspect of the fair use policy I think is kind of ridiculous. Let's take a look at the actual policy here. Okay, so here's the policy here. First, a couple good things. Traffic neutrality. This is pretty important. As they, you know, try to manage network traffic, they're not gonna go into the actual streams of data coming from your connection and try to selectively prioritize some and deprioritize others. This is something that other ISPs have done in the past, going in and say, throttling your Netflix, but not throttling web browsing, or you know, trying to throttle downloads, but not throttle video calls, that type of thing. Um, Starlink's not gonna do that. It's neutral to the traffic, application agnostic. 
I think that's great because it lets you do that shaping if you want to, giving priority to certain traffic or not, but they're not gonna go in and mess with it. So I think that's a, a very good choice on their part. Residential service, so I talked about this a bit. Priority access is what you get when you're in a fixed location, residential access. If you exceed your threshold, you get bumped down to basic access. And if you go down here, you can see for residential, you've got your one terabyte. You can buy additional priority access if, if you really need it, but I think one terabyte should be good for most. And then different throttles here. So this is where I think the kind of crazy thing is. So business usage is similar. You can choose a tier, 500 gigabytes, one terabyte, three terabytes. But the bit I think is ridiculous is once you exceed your threshold for priority access, you actually do get throttled. And it's quite a strict throttle, one megabit per second up and down. So if you remember the residential usage, you don't get throttled, you just get moved down to basic access. So it can still be quite fast if your area is not very busy, but for business users, they don't get that. They will get throttled at one megabit per second up and down. And another thing that uh, seems kind of crazy is they can buy additional priority access at $1 per gigabyte. Remember that $1 per gigabyte for residential users, it's only 25 cents per gigabyte. So they're paying four times more to get additional priority access. And they're already paying more for their plan than the residential users. So I think that is a bit crazy. The one thing that maybe makes it worth it is that for business users, business fixed users, their priority access is slightly different. Priority access for business users specifically says here, network priority over all other data on the Starlink network, all other data. So that includes priority over residential users. If I scroll up to the residential services, priority access data is given precedent over the basic access data. Business users is priority over all other data. So you are getting a higher quality of service. Your traffic is going to supersede even residential users. So maybe there's slightly more value there, but the throttling one megabit per second up and down, that seems pretty harsh when you're already paying so much extra for this service. If you're a business user, let me know in the comments what you think of this difference. If you've missed me on YouTube and you're happy to see me back, hit that like button. It really helps the channel grow. I'm in a new space trying to get everything set up and decorated, so I'll probably look different each new video I post. Thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.